Hey, it's Ben. It's Ian. Jordan. I'm John. And Warren Billy Talent, and you are watching Ambi. Hey everyone, it's Alicia from Ambi, and I'm so excited to be here with Billy Talent today. What's up? Hello. 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 How you guys doing? Great. 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 I just want to say thank Talking you for taking the time voice. to have a chat. We're so excited to be doing this. Well, thank you for having us. It's our pleasure. So it's, it's an exciting time to be in the band because this Friday you're releasing your newest record, Afraid of Heights. Yay! Finally. Christ. <laughs> yeah. It feels like it's taking forever. Forever. To Does it? Yeah. 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 When you look back at putting this whole record together, what are some standout moments for you or some highlights that come to mind? Mr. Dessau? Oh, wow. Um, standout moments was... Uh, it. Yeah, there was a, a lot happened uh, before we went in the studio on this one. So, um, Aaron, you know, not being able to play on the record, and uh, so Jordan obviously stepping in and uh, playing drums on this record. Uh, that was a whole, you know, new new change for us, and I think uh, everything turned out, you know, better than we could imagine. Yeah, and also we did it's the first time we did the whole record in Toronto. Okay. You know, so we did the drums at a beautiful studio called Revolution, and we've been fortunate enough over the years to kind of put together uh, a studio that is, I would say, world class, function, functioning. Very world class. <laughs> world class. <laughs> Might not be the most aesthetically pleasing, but it works no. really well. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it was nice to be able to do it all at home, and uh, and yeah, and this fella worked his uh, his keister off yeah, making this record. He was record. producing the record and. Um, yeah, so it turned out amazing. Very proud of it. Well, I absolutely love the artwork for all the stuff. Oh, cool. Like Thank you. So it do looks we. so cool. It, it even yeah. looks good on cookies. It does look good on cookies. Yeah. So we're going to cut to that. It looks amazing. It's like almost a Sin City comic book kind of vibe. So what inspired that take for it? Well, we were talking about what kind of image uh, we want for the album cover, and, and we wanted to go with something that was like that old school like Russian propaganda look. Um, and there's a great comic book illustrator named Igor Hofbauer that – uh, once you know, when, when we saw his work, we were just blown away. Like he does uh, really, really amazing uh, tour posters for bands. So we reached out to him and sent him uh, some of the demos and lyrics, and and he came back with these incredible images that really told stories and had uh, really complimented the the themes of each song. Yeah, I no, I, I, no, 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 no. <laughs> just I was actually just thinking because we we did an image for every song, and I was just yeah. kind of, I was flipping through my them in my mental Rolodex and every single image is awesome. Yeah. Like there's not one that's weak. Yeah. 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 Well, prior to going into this, were you guys fans of comic books? Was that kind of why you wanted to take that route? The man or? on the totally. end there is. Yeah. Ah, yeah so you I definitely am. are. I love, yeah. uh, I love comic books and I like the whole comic con type of culture and all that kind of stuff. It's a, it's a nice escape. Yeah. I, I grew up collecting comic books and graphic novels, so it's a lot of fun. Awesome. He walks around a store. Thor underwear. <laughs> At home. With my hammer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's not a hammer. <laughs> hey, man. Uh, <laughs> I actually have Superman underwear. You do? Wow. Very nice. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I love Thor, though, but that, that was I good. actually have a picture of you holding a hammer from Germany. Oh, there you go. <laughs> for the, oh, that, for that, massive, that And you won. And you won. You won. Yeah, you had to hold yeah, a hammer for like Thor. two minutes. That was, that was, that was impressive. <laughs> I was a little worried about you, to be honest. A giant Thor hammer. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, there you right have it. <laughs> Some very cool tidbits right, yeah, right yeah. there. Yeah. Well, just going back to the title, For Afraid of Heights, what's the significance behind that to you? Because after listening to the album front to back, I kind of get this sense of just going for whatever you want and uh, trying to face your fears in the end. So what's it to mean to you? Um, well, I mean, for for me, it was uh, it's all about um, not giving in to fear, and and uh, the theme of afraid of heights is that's how it's a metaphor for where we kind of stand right now globally. I feel like I think there's just an over overwhelming uh, sense of fear amongst uh, a, a lot of people, and and I think it's uh, we need to overcome that and 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 look beyond that and do the right thing. Does anyone in the band literally have a fear of heights? Anyone here or no? I don't feel at ease when I'm very high. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I, <laughs> I'm not, take pleasure I, in I don't it? shake. I don't get like, I'm not paranoid about it. But I have a really hard time on the, the thing that we did at the CN Tower there, the glass floor. Yeah, the like glass that's, floor. That's, that's, that's unsettling. Okay. Anyone that says it's not is lying. Yeah, yeah. I agree. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah. So. Dance on yeah, it. Yeah, I love heights. Beer, no, you're scared. <laughs> hey. Are you scared of stuff? Uh, I'm not afraid of heights. Gen well, the, tell you what I am afraid of. Uh -oh. Turbulence. Oh, I okay. agree. And I guess that's kind of being afraid of heights because... I hear Hi. you, sister. Who are you talking to? <laughs> yeah. Preaching the converted. It could be just like afraid of death, though. That could be. Like, oh, could the plane's be. going down. 
Anytime there's afraid. a big like bump, I'm just like, yeah, there it is, there it is. Oh, <laughs> heart's working. Don't miss that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we had a couple bad landings as of late. Yeah. Yeah. Have you? That's scary. Yeah, but anyway, won't mention the airline, but it was scary. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We have to tell me a little bit about this kick-ass track you have called Louder Than the DJ. There is the lyric in there, and it's generation narcissistic, little miss selfie, and lonely boy slick. It's time to it's time you got a brand new fix. Like, I just love that line. <laughs> I love that line. So it's what, a good one. What sparked that? God. Pokemon. <laughs> there you go. That's kind of what, yeah, it's weird. That's what's happening right now. People are get, like, getting, like, almost getting hit, by, hit cars. by cars. It's fascinating yeah, yeah. walking yeah. around. Just you, you know what people are doing. Oh, yeah, you can see them. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I guess that the whole thing, the whole song is about, you know, uh, uh, more or less defending rock and roll's place in the world and uh, that rock and roll saved our lives. And, you know, hopefully it will um, it will never die. It's not a slight against dance music or DJ no. culture because we are, have a lot of friends who are involved in that. But it's also just saying that rock and roll saved our lives and it should uh, hopefully, you know, uh, if you have the inclination to pick up a guitar or sit behind a drum set or pick up a bass, then, you know, hopefully it will change your life and change a whole bunch of other people's lives as well. Well, you've actually said before how a lot of the shows that the band used to see when you were younger Mm -hmm. changed your lives and kind of influenced who you are today. So Mm -hmm. when you think back to some of those shows, which come to mind? Rage Against the Machine. Uh, At at the the, concert hall. Yeah, at the concert hall. With Quicksand opening for House of Pain. That one changed Mm -hmm. my life. That moved me. Yeah. Yeah. I'd have to go with um, maybe seeing Green Day or Smashing Pumpkins in the late mid late 90s that was a big one those were big ones for me yeah well, in our late teens all the, the Lollapalooza was still a traveling festival and used to come to the to Barrie and we used to get to go to those and for three years in a row I, I saw everybody from Pearl Jam Rage Primus Mi- Ministry wow. like, all Chili the Peppers. Soundgarden yeah, Chili Peppers. Everything, Tool. everything from Tool. those years was just uh, magical but mm-hmm. there were lots of concerts that kind of affected me as I grew Cindy Lauper. Cindy Lauper, yes. Yeah. That's a big one. Wham. Wham. <laughs> Wham. George Michael solo. George Michael. <laughs> Hall with no oats. Hall, yeah. hold the oats, please. <laughs> <laughs> hold the oats. Hold the oats. Oh, God. Well, I just want to run through a little quick fire round with the four of you. I think, I think this is going to be fun. Oh, I can already tell. <laughs> so the first one being, what are some band t-shirts you own that you know mm. you're never going to be able to get rid of? I have about six Pearl Jam shirts. I really do. Yeah. Rage Against the Machine. Sound oh, the original, like the Pearl Jam one? Yeah, oh, wow. Original with that's the, from that show. Album. That's yeah. from that show. From that show. Wow, that's crazy. You got some easy stuff. Yeah. Wow. Got some old um, Sonic Onion Records shirts. Oh, yeah. geez. Science Fear, Tristan Just Psionic. Radical. Tristan Psionic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shallow, North Dakota. Some wow. Oldies. oldies but goodies. They're at yeah. my mom's house Psionic. somewhere. I got my, uh, uh, my Buzzcocks tour from our... Uh, her shirt from the first tour we did in the U.S. with the Buzzcocks, and that was our first U.S. tour ever. That's one of my favorites. And uh, that's a good shirt. I got a Death from Above pre nineteen seventy nine shirt still from Get Out of Here. Those early tours we did with them. Shut the front door. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and when it comes to Generation Narcissistic, what would you say are some of your biggest pet peeves? I, I get yeah. I guess well, just people that will you know walking down a sidewalk like just glued to their phone. That's so dangerous. <laughs> so yeah. kind of dumb in a way. <laughs> um, but that's the you know like that's the culture we live in. And I guess that lyric and that whole the whole idea behind that is is get away from that thing because that's not real life experience. Go into Absolutely. a bar and check out your local bands and support them and and uh, you'll just have a great time. People will have a you know when you. Just get rid of that for a night and <laughs> put it in your pocket yeah, and your phone leave it alone and live. I'm sure you see that yeah. shows as well, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you do a lot. You know, but that's just the way people communicate and consume. You know, it's weird. It's uh well, I'm we're all victims of it. Like we all like oh at least I won't speak on behalf of them, but you know, I I'm the same way. Like I find myself sometimes glued to my phone for no reason and I just turn it off. Now I have a thing, like if you come over to my house for dinner, like everyone you have to leave your phone on the table. Unless you have okay. kids, because emergencies. Uh, but yeah, so you just sit and talk and no one, because it's really easy to be like, okay, we're end of sentence. And then you're like, everyone just checks their phone. But during the silence, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, look, it's just like it's, totally. something it's, it's become a thing, yeah. 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 All right, well, for the next one, if you could do places with an artist in the industry for one day, which artist would you love to do that with? If we could what? Trade, Trade places? places? I'd be Taylor Swift. Okay. Oh. Hmm. Music industry only? You can do whoever you like. Oh, okay. Oh, well. Go for it. I thought it was just music. <laughs> I'll still be Taylor Swift. <laughs> I'll say Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh. oh. <laughs> That's a good one. 
I'm going to say Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I, would, I don't know. It would be fun to be on a talk show or something like that. So I'm going to say, like, uh, Stephen Colbert or something like that. Well, just to wrap things up today, is there anything you want to say to all of your fans who are going to be viewing the interview? Any parting words? We have a new album coming out, and please go pick it up. We're super excited about it. Donald Trump's a bastard. Yes. And I just want to say thank you so much for <laughs> your time today. We do appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks. It's thank my you pleasure. so much. And remember, to everyone viewing, you can visit us at musicblogger.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more with your favorite bands. See you next time. Au revoir. Au revoir.